When you hear the word hostel, this might conjure images of chainsaw-wielding psychos from famous horror movies, or a place for smelly, hairy hippies. Well, in New Zealand, hostels aren't that bad. In fact, hostels are the most popular budget accommodation for travelers. If you've never stayed in a hostel before, then stick around, because this guide will tell you all the do's and don'ts of staying in a hostel. the team behind backpackerguide.nz, helping you plan an epic trip to New Zealand. In this beginner's guide to backpacker hostel, we'll go through everything you need to know about staying in a hostel in New Zealand. We'll explain what to expect in a hostel room by room as we feel it's the easiest and best way to understand what a backpacker hostel establishment entails. Plus, at the end of this video, we'll give you 10 essential rules of etiquette for staying in a hostel. And by the way, we work super hard on bringing you all these videos to help you plan your trip to New Zealand, so show your support by hitting the like button below. Better yet, hit subscribe. Look, we'll even pause the video so you have time to do that. Thanks, now let's get on with the video. First up, what happened when you check into a hostel? We told you this was a beginner's guide and we're starting with the basics. If you have made a booking, you will give your name to check in. If you have not made a booking, you will pay for your night on check in. The receptionist will either show you around the hostel, which usually happens if it's a really small hostel, or direct you to the facilities and your room using a map. They will also go over things you need to know about the hostel and any ground rules, like check out is at 10am, no alcohol allowed in the hostel, and the spa pool closed at 8pm for instance. Once checked in, you will be given a key or key card to your room. Alright, now let's talk about hostel dorm rooms. The most common room type in a backpacker hostel are bunk rooms or dorms. Dorm rooms usually range from 4 to 10 beds, either as bunk beds or single beds all in one room. Beds almost always come with linen and bedding and they will also likely have no sleeping bag policy. However, the odd hostel around the country will offer beds at a much cheaper price of no linen or linen will be available to hire. When you book yourself into a dorm room, you book yourself into one bed of that dorm room, while the rest of the beds will be occupied by other backpacker. Or if you're super lucky, it's a low season and you've got the room to yourself. While well, most hostels have mixed rooms, meaning dorm rooms for males and females, some hostels offer female-only dorms, and rarely there are male-only dorms too. So what are the facilities that you can find in a dorm? Most dorms only consist of beds and no other facilities, however sometimes they might include an ensuite bathroom, lockers, luggage storage, a rubbish bin, maybe tables and chairs as well. And what is the price for a bed in a hostel dorm? If a hostel offers multiple sized dorms, then the more beds in a room, the cheaper the price, with a four bed dorm being the most expensive. Dorm rooms can range from anything between 20 to 35 New Zealand dollars per person per night. Next up, let's talk about hostel private rooms. Almost all hostels offer private rooms in New Zealand, and most private rooms are double rooms, i.e. they have a double bed. However, hostels also may offer single or twin rooms. Private rooms in the hostel will have the bedding and linen provided and made up. Often, private rooms also come with a towel and soap. They may also have a rubbish bin, luggage storage, an ensuite shower and bathroom, and even tea and coffee making facilities. When you book a private room, you get a whole room to yourself, and the cost of a double or twin room is usually between 60 to 85 New Zealand dollars. A single room, when available, is more likely to be between 50 to 85 dollars. For this price, we recommend also considering other forms of budget accommodation when staying in private rooms. Take a look at our staying in a private room article, which we'll link up to in the description below, for a huge comparison. Now let's move on to the communal facilities, starting with the kitchen. Every backpacker hostel in New Zealand will have a communal kitchen, which gets a lot of use from hostel guests. Cooking for yourself in a hostel is the best way to save money while on the road. Take a look at our super easy hostel recipes on NZ for inspiration on what to cook using very basic hostel facilities. The link is obviously in the description below. So what facilities do hostel kitchens have? The facilities to expect in most hostels includes 
fridge, stovetop, microwave, kettles, toasters, button pans, chopping boards, and basic kitchen utensils like a knife, wooden spoons, and spatulas, and cans openers, and plates, and cutteries, and mugs, and drinking glasses, and sinks, towels, and stuff to wash your dishes with, and even sometimes you get a freezer and an oven. There are a few things you need to know about using hostel kitchens. The number one rule of using a hostel kitchen is that you need to label your food. Most hostels will provide stickers and have a sign telling you what to write. It's usually your name, room number and your departure date. Common practice is to put your chilled food together in a plastic bag, label the plastic bag and put it in the fridge. There will be a separate food storage area for food that can be left at room temperature. Label this food in a bag too. The second rule of hostel kitchen is to wash up and dry your dishes and put them away afterwards. And finally, obviously don't take other people's food. Take a look at our article on how to live in a hostel for more rules on etiquette in a hostel. Next up, what about hostel bathrooms? Where do you go to shower? For those of you who are not staying in an ensuite room, there are communal showers and toilets. Showers and toilets are separated into male and female bathrooms. Usually, bathrooms will be on the same floor as your dorm or private room. Showers and toilets are separated by cubicles, while there will be a row of sink basins with some mirrors behind, much like a public bathroom. There is usually a power outlet in a hostel bathroom for shaving or blow drying your hair. If hair dryers are not provided in the bathroom itself, then there is usually one available to borrow at reception if you need it. One last note on bathrooms, shampoos and soaps are not usually provided in these shared bathrooms, so you should always bring all your own toiletries to a hostel. So what about hostel receptions? The third thing you see when entering a hostel is the reception or some sort of desk. This is where you check in and check out of the hostel and go to for any questions. Hostel receptions are also often booking agents for local activities and transports, so they are a good source to go to for more information about the local area. Some hostels may also run a job finding service for those on a working holiday visa, and those are called working hostels. We'll give you more information about that link to in the description below. If you need an extra blanket during the winter months, change for the laundry machines, or even an extra pillow, don't be afraid to ask at reception. Plus, most hostels offer luggage storage, so you can store your luggage before or after you have checked into the hostel. Hostel storage is particularly handy if you are doing a multi-day hike, for instance. Another common of facilities is the lounge. Sofas, TV, games, backpacker hostels always have somewhere to hang out. They will often have a lounge area with sofas, tables, board games, a book exchange and more. They may also have an outside communal area too and the communal lounge is where many hostels differ with some providing the basics to others going all out to keep backpackers entertained. Some but not all hostels have computers and internet access and some, but not all, hostels have either paid Wi-Fi or free Wi-Fi, although it's not always the best connection, so learn more about Stay Connected in New Zealand in our guide to getting free Wi-Fi and internet linked up in the description below. Some other hostels provide other communal facilities such as spa pools, sauna, free-to-use bike, free breakfast and even game rooms. Finally, the last communal room you'll find in a hostel is the laundry room. All hostels will have a laundry facility. This usually includes multiple washing machines and tumble dryer. Sometimes there will be a washing line outside to hang your wet clothes for drying. However, if there is no washing line, then you must use a tumble dryer to dry your clothes, as hanging wet clothes in your room is generally not allowed. The typical laundry prices for the use of washing machine is four New Zealand dollars per wash and four dollars for a cycle on the tumble dryer. Machines will either be coin operated or you'll need to purchase a token from reception. A quick tip for using the laundry in hostels is don't overfill the machine. Your clothes will not wash or dry properly if you stuff too many clothes in there because hostel laundry machines are often old and not that high tech. Saying that, when you see a good laundry facility, use it. Take advantage of the good washing machine when you see it. And note that some tumble dryers will take a couple of cycles to dry your clothes completely. That's just the way it is in some hostels with old machines. That's it for our beginner's guide to hostels in New Zealand, but as promised, here's 10 essential rules of etiquette for staying in a hostel. Number one, don't have sex in the dorm. 
Although it sounds like an awesome challenge, this is awkward for everyone. Number two, if you're leaving your dorm room really early the next morning, have your bags packed and your clothes ready the night before for a quick change as to not wake everyone up by rummaging. Number three, on the same note, be respectful to those sleeping in your dorm. No one likes a drunken mooncat making a noise and falling into the bunk beds. Four, be social. It makes it easier to share a room with people when you're being social. And if your roommate doesn't seem too keen though, just give them some space. Number five, keep an eye on the time when doing your laundry. If you are not there when the machine has finished, then chances are that the next person will put your clothes somewhere in the room randomly. Six, turn your phone silent at night. Seven, be tidy. Not only will people have not to trip over your stuff, it also help you keep track of where your positions are. Eight, keep showers to a maximum of five minutes so that others don't have to wait for too long. Number nine, as mentioned when we talked about the kitchen, clean up after yourself, including washing and drying and putting away your dishes. This encourages more people to do the same thing and actually gives everyone a lot of space to prepare meals. And ten, have a shower regularly and wash your clothes once, at least once a week. No one wants to share a room with a smelly person. Alright guys, we hope that that answered all your questions about staying in a backpacker hostel in New Zealand. But if you do have any extra questions, stick them in the comments below. We are here to answer them for you. Plus, we're tackling 365 days doing 365 activities in New Zealand and releasing those videos every single day. So be sure to subscribe for more New Zealand bucket list inspiration. Until next time, travel awesome.